go back where we were over to the book of James. Let's look here in the first chapter. Now, remember we talked yesterday about James, the fact that he was raised in the household with Jesus. And um, Jesus' first miracle was at the wedding of Canaan. We know that. Scripture says that. That's the first miracle that he did. But we also know, since the scripture says it is impossible to please God without faith, and that Jesus perfectly pleased the Father, we know that he lived and walked by faith. Because God said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So he had to be walking by faith. And this is the reason they thought he was crazy. He lived by faith. Think of that. Amen. Ran his little carpenter shop down there without borrowing money. Yeah. He just didn't do what he's supposed to do. Didn't talk like he's supposed to talk. And by the time he got into this ministry just a few days, his whole family thought he was absolutely crazy. And, and, and the Greek word lunatic is used. They thought he was over the edge. Now, I'm saying all this and spend a little time to get you over into James' thinking because later Jesus came to him after he was raised. Amen. And, and here is the born again James teaching what he had learned from the Holy Ghost. Well, you would, you would know that he's recalling things that he heard Jesus say and things that he saw him do and the way he handled situations and, and, and his manner of life. And then James said, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into different temptations, testings, and trials, knowing this that the trying of your faith, when your faith gets under pressure, patience goes to work. Patience, the word translated patience there, means constant consistency. Now, what could you say about Jesus when the pressure was on? They couldn't change him. No, no, and the apostle Paul said, none of these things move me. That was the force of patience talking. I'm not getting off the word. I don't care what comes. Remember when Jesus said, uh, the sower sows the word. These are they by the wayside where the word is sown. Well, what happened to the people by the wayside where the word was sold? They had no root in themselves. And so they became offended. What did they actually do? They quit, they, they quit speaking the word that they had received with gladness. They stopped speaking that and started speaking the pressure Amen. that Satan was putting on them. And that's what stole the word. They quit speaking the word that they received with gladness and started speaking the deceitfulness of riches. They started speaking the pressures from other things. They started speaking the cares of this world. They started speaking what their friends and neighbors and family were saying about them to persecute them. They started saying what they're saying. Do you know what they said about me? I can't believe they said that about me. They said blah, 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 blah. And then you go over there. I'm going to tell you what they said. Oh, did you hear what they said? That, oh, yeah, did you hear what they By the time you tell it about four or five times, and now you're lying because you've embellished it enough. <laughs> the devil's got you adding to it now. Well, he got a rope around your neck that's leading you around anywhere you want to, yeah, he wants you to go. Now, notice now, 
Let constancy. Yeah. It's a little different here than consistent. It, it's in the same, it's in the same package. But constantly, I am constantly the same. I do the same. I say the same. I, my ways, what am I doing? I am saying what I hear my father say. I'm doing what I see my father do. Now listen to me. The person that lives by faith never has to change his lifestyle because of the times around him. He's the same way all the time. My, my, my needs are met according to his riches and glory. The economy goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down, but it's still not my source. So I, I, don't, I don't have to change except to be corrected from on high and correct and, and measure my steps and so forth. I'm hearing from God, do this, do that. I'm being corrected and so forth and so on. That, that, that's where my changes are. Not because the economy has done something or other. Because our economy hadn't changed. Amen. 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 Heaven's economy don't ever change. James is talking about this. Let being consistently constant, stay on the word. Don't look to the right or the left. Make sure, I mean, you double check and you double check and re-double check that you keep in the commandment of love. You are walking in love. Don't you ever let any kind of thing get inside your shield of faith where the love of God is concerned. Don't you dare get offended in somebody. Amen. Yeah, but you don't know what they did to me. I don't care. Jesus covered it, whatever it is. And the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. Amen. No, you can't love them, but the love of God in you can. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Consistently constant. Don't look to the right hand or the left. Stay on the love line all the time. Walking by faith, everything you do by faith, keeping your words filled with faith, staying in the word, keeping the word before you all the time. Amen. Now, what are we doing? We are expecting consistent constancy to make me completely perfect and mature, wanting nothing. You know what it said? There's something involved then in this book right here in the very first chapter. There's something in this book. There's a secret here of Jesus' little brother. There's something, there's something this man's got that will bring us to a place I'm to, hey, that you may be perfect and entire, won't eat nothing. Does that sound like abundance of grace abounding towards you that you always having all sufficiency in all things? Yes, glory. Yes, sir. Sound like it to me, doesn't it, you? Well, that makes me want to go on and, and, and read on, brother. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all, give to all liberally. And upbraideth not. To upbraid means to find fault. One of the biggest things in my life that ever, ever happened to me was my wife coming over to the chair where I was seated. I was under an enormous amount of pressure. A lot of different things. She came over to me. 
she put her hand on me and looked right into my face and said so softly and so sweetly, I find no fault in you. I tell you, it, it, it went down into a place in me that's so deep. It's deeper than I even knew was in me. And it's still there. And that was years and years ago. That was a word of grace that edified me. And I realized that this was the Holy Ghost talking to me. And this is what Creflo was bringing us, stirring us up all about last night. This is what grace is. God finds no fault in you. He'll give you his wisdom without finding fault. If you went to God about wisdom to get rid of a fault in your life and he found fault, <laughs> then how would you get to wisdom to get rid of the fault that he found in you? Amen. Well, that's how goofy religion is. No, Jesus covered that with his blood. Now you have to ask in faith. He says that right here. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. What does he mean, nothing wavering? Consistently constant on the word, on the love of God, on faith. You step out of line, I mean, you repent and get right back in there. Confess the thing, repent it, and say, thank you, Jesus, for my forgiveness and my cleansing. Thank you, sir. Help me with this, Lord. I receive your wisdom in this situation. Now, go from there. Now, let me, let me read to him again. Any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. It shall be given him. Yeah. Say it. It shall be given me. It shall be given me. My God. Now, wait a minute. Let me read it again before I say this because some of you still got a choke point here. It shall be given him. How? Liberally. Without fault finding. Do you hear what I said? Upbraideth not means without fault finding. Mm -hmm. Say it again. It shall be given me. He. Oh, that was really <laughs> weak. <laughs> he. he. Finds Fine. no fault no with me. With me. He loves me. God loves Kenneth. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Set aside the afternoon sometime and, and say that 2,000 times. God loves me. Ooh, Jesus loves me. God loves me. God loves Kenna. God loves Kenna. God loves me. God loves me. And then get in the 17th chapter of John, read it, and then and get, go back to it then and say, God loves me just as much as he does Jesus. Because Jesus prayed that and said that. Oh, I tell you, religion chokes on that. Whew. I did too the first time I found it, but I got unchoked real quick because it was written in red and red words win. Yes. Praise God. Amen. All right, now, look, look, put your eyes right there on that again. Entire wanting nothing if any of you lack wisdom. Wisdom about what? Test temptations and trials. Let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. What? Wisdom. Wisdom of God. Liberally. Without fault finding. It shall be given him or given me. Wisdom from God without fault finding liberally to me. Because he doesn't find fault in me. You got that? 
So now, by faith, what am I expecting? I'm expecting wisdom, right? From God. Whoa. Verse 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, cometh down from the Father of lights, uh, from whom there is no variableness, neither a shadow of turning, and of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be the kind of first fruits of his creatures. Then he goes into talking about Receive the word, be doers of the word, not hearers only. What word? The words of wisdom from above. You're going to have to do what you get. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loves me, and I will love him, and my Father will love him, and I'll manifest myself to him. He didn't say to those that cry and squall and bawl the longest and the loudest and, and fast until they starve nearly <laughs> completely. No, no. I'm telling you, there's tens of millions of Christians every Sunday squall and loud as they can trying to get Jesus to manifest himself right. some way or other. That's right. Well, he's already told you how. Amen. What he tells you to do, do it. Now, in closing this, let's go from this first chapter, wisdom is coming from above. We're being a doer of the word that comes from above. It is a good gift that uh, comes from the Father. We're becoming entire and wanting nothing, and we're being a doer of the word and not a hearer only. And now it has become, in verse 25, the perfect law of liberty, a doer of the work. This man then shall be blessed. Ah, we have activated the blessing. Yes. We've activated the blessing here some way. Yes. Yes. It's the blessing that causes you to be entire wanting nothing. Yes. Huh? Amen. Wow. All right. Let's look over then in the third chapter. We read this yesterday. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Now, he already said back there before he ever got into this chapter, before he ever started talking about that, in the 26th verse of the first chapter of James, if any among you seem to be religious and bridles not his tongue, deceives his own spirit. Ha! Wow. That's wisdom from on high. Now you come over here now, he's talking about he can bridle the whole body. If he bridles his tongue, he can bridle the whole body. And he begins to talk about and teach on the, the tongue. Now remember, let me go back over here again. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Now, what are we looking for? We're looking for a release of the blessing so that we, we uh, so our outcome is becoming perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Verse 14, if you have bitter envying and strife in your heart, glory not, and lie not against the truth. What truth? The wisdom that came from above yes. when you by faith ask God under pressure from testing temptations and trials 
Don't start talking the test and the temptation and the trial again. No. Don't start that. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't let, let that bitterness get in you. Don't start talking that. No, no, don't start talking that. Stay on the Word. Keep being a doer and a sayer of the Word, bridling your tongue with that Word that came from on high. You're talking that Word from on high. No, shut up that other. Shut, I mean, yeah. stuff something in your mouth. Yeah. Now, how are you going to do that? You're going to have to keep your eyes on the Word. You're going to have to keep it in your mouth. You're going to have to keep it in your ears. If the cares of this world is, is what the devil is using to steal the Word out of you, don't spend your time watching the news media. No, sir. Spend your time on wisdom from above. Ha, 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 glory to God. This year, give a gift that keeps on giving. We've all come to love the best-selling devotional from Faith to Faith, A Daily Guide to Victory by Kenneth and Glory Copeland. Delivering each day a timely word, it has helped our partners and friends from around the world enjoy a closer walk with God. For 2013, we've done something new. Now with this new leather-bound gift edition, we want you and those dear to you to continue in the Word. Sister Gloria heard from the Lord, in consistency lies the power. Become so consistent in the Word that its power will explode in you. This daily guide will cause you to be God-inside-minded daily. It's designed to help you feed your faith every single day to develop the kind of mountain-moving faith that will make you more than a conqueror in every area of your life for the rest of your life, starting now. You'll have so much to sing about in the new year. In fact, celebrate your victories as you sing along with Brother Copeland in this music CD also included when you order this package. Be blessed and bless someone every day of the year. Start your day in the Word of God. Order the Daily Guide to Victory package at a special price of only $32. Go to kcm.org or call or write to us today. This package includes KCM's best-selling devotional from Faith to Faith in a new leather-bound edition and Kenneth Copeland's music CD, Just a Closer Walk. Make every day victorious by living in faith. For an additional 10% off, order your package online. For these and other KCM products, go to kcm.org. We're coming to the end of another year, and I know it's so natural. It's within our nature and our tendency just to look ahead to the coming year and wonder what's ahead, what's in store. You know, let me tell you what you need for next year. You need the wisdom of God as you step into 2013. So I'm encouraging you. Be encouraged by what Brother Copeland shared today. God will freely give you his wisdom and he'll do it without finding fault with you. What's that mean? It means you can approach him boldly, like the word says, expecting to receive, expecting to receive grace, expecting to receive the help that you need to live next year. Now, you may have made promises at the beginning of 2012 that like so many others, you didn't keep them. But let me tell you something. God is not holding that against you. He's not withholding wisdom from you because of that. That's what the blood of Jesus is for. And it doesn't matter what the media is saying to us. Let them talk. doesn't matter what anybody else is saying. You have a God that you can expect to receive from. You can expect a year of blessing in 2013. Why? Because he has set his love upon you. He loves you. Now, this broadcast is seen in so many different countries all over the world, but no matter what is going on in your part of the world, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, then you are a citizen of God's kingdom. And since all is well with God, all will be well with you. Amen. Do you believe that? I hope you do. Now, this ministry is standing in agreement with you right now for a blessed year in 2013. And that's why we've got many great teaching resources uh, that, that can help you grow and walk with the Lord, grow in your faith, learn how much you are loved by Him, find out what the Word of God has to say about you in this upcoming year. Visit us online at kcm.org to find out more. Thanks so much for joining us on this broadcast today. Remember that God loves you and we love you and Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us on The Believer's Voice of Victory. For today's broadcast on DVD or CD, our product offer, or for more information on Kenneth Copeland Ministries, visit our website at kcm.org.
While you're online, you'll discover a resource of faith-based teaching and free information to help you find the answers you're looking for. If you need prayer, call Kenneth Copeland Ministries Prayer Line today. When you walk by faith, everything is going to be all right. Gloria, this is Ella. And last year she was diagnosed with breast cancer. She went ahead and had the surgery. Then she was double checked and they said that the cancer came back and she refused the treatment. She stood on the word and she had a lump in her left breast and as of this morning was swollen. As of right now, she checked and the lump is gone. Oh, thank you, Lord. We're so grateful. I've been trusting him since I was 12 and now I'm 71. So I've been trusting him since, but as we grow and as we in the word, I'll confess the word over me every day. So what Gloria was saying today was already doing, but I just knew that there had to be the expectation, there had to be a fulfillment before I left Ohio. I said, I'm going on a mission. Anything that's broken needs to be restored. Um, God's gonna do it while I'm there. I'm not bringing it back bringing back not anything that was broken. Anything that was out of place, God was gonna put it back in place. This is a, com a believer's convention. And all we've been hearing about faith in the word, faith in Jesus, speaking the word. And so if I was ever gonna get healed any place in the atmosphere of the worship and the praise and, um, and, the, and the belief, you're in the expectation in the atmosphere, that we're been in this week, I couldn't miss it. I didn't mean to go home without it. I, even this morning, I said I would not go home without it. <laughs> I came to get it. The tears just keep coming. I'm just, I'm just so happy. But I am so healed, and I thank God that the Bible said we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So I got a testimony, and I'm going to shout it from the <laughs> highest heights. I'm going to shout it out because it is done. Radiation didn't do it, chemo didn't do it, but Jesus did it when he went to the cross. It's already done. And I received it, I took it, that's what I did. <laughs>